Ooh, brew time again. Uh, I'm really getting into Mangrove Jacks. I've done a few of their like, um, American, uh, both of those are Hobby Porter. Anyway, um, I'm going for kegging next. So I'll do something for the keg. So it's either going to be the red IPA or uh, oh, I might do a lager. Don't know. What do you reckon? Yeah, actually. Do you know what? I'm going to do both. Uh, went to Tesco's. They got these on sale, 17p for two litres of still spring water. Uh, see if that tastes any different to uh, Sheffield Council Pop um, for American and overseas uh, friends. Council Pop is what we call tap water. These mangrove jack kits, they come in this bag and it's a two part bag. They've just started on the back putting um, a diagram to show. And what I tend to do is run a razor blade across here so it doesn't cut into the back part of the bag where the malt is. That enables you to take out the hops. Oh, that's good. That's M54. Nice. Pucker. Yeast. And the book of words, the destructions. I might read those one day. Uh, and some hops to dry hop. Because I then stick this in some bloody hot water. And what I don't want to do is stick that in some bloody hot water while it's got the yeast in there. So let's go and make it. I'm sterilising. I cleaned it. And now I'm sterilising it, the bucket. And then what I'm going to do is chuck that in there throw in some sugar and give it all a whizz around um and then I'll, I'll come back and film the last bit chucking all that water in there uh, but first actually this is the um, ba -da -ba -ba. this is it and this i've got to say it's one of my favorite brews at the moment it really it doesn't look fantastic does it uh but well it does look fantastic thinking about it of course it looks fantastic what I meant was it doesn't look, you know what I mean. Uh, stop talking bollocks, Bailey, and make some fucking beer. So what I did was stick the pouch in some warm water, pour it in here, then chuck a couple of, oh, you know, a couple of litres or whatever it was, a bit anyway of boiling water into the pouch to rinse the pouch out, and threw in a kilogram of a dextrose sugar. Now some people say you could just use normal granulated sugar. I don't. I use dextrose. Yeah. See? How posh am I? Um, I don't know whether it makes any difference. However, give that a stir. And what I'm going to do is start chucking these bottles in. Worries me. All this plastic. I don't know what to do with these bottles after I've done. I'm going to do something with them. I'm not sure what yet. I'm running out of beer. That's a worry. Uh, mm. <sighs> Definitely. Time for another one of those. That's the uh, Hoppy Porter. Again, from Mangrove Jacks. Now, I'm going to start bunging all of that water in here. And the point is, what I want to do is get as much air in here as possible. Oh yeah, hang on. Um, right, hang on, I'll tell you about the yeast. Hang on. Little, I was going to say Durex, not, it's Pyrex. Little Pyrex jug, which I have sanitised, sterilised and all that sort of stuff. There's some cooled water in there that has been boiled. Um, and what I would have done normally is make a little sugar syrup solution, but I forgot. So I'm going to put some sugar in there and then... The yeast. I'm going to dissolve the sugar and then sprinkle the yeast on top. Now, normally, I would just um, sprinkle the yeast on top of the wort and the, you know, not. I suppose it is wort, isn't it? Unfermented beer. Uh, now it gives you some nice little destructions on the back about, or it tells you about 
rehydrating it and stuff like that. What I have done is very, very straightforward. I have put some sugar in my Durex jug and I've sprinkled me uh, me yeast on the top and I'm just going to give it a quick whiz around make sure that it's all in contact with sugary bit anyone who's made bread or if you've seen any of my videos about making bread you will know now what I'm doing and this is making a starter this is giving the yeast a, a bit of a kick start I'm not putting any yeast uh, thingy in nutrient stuff in here um, all I'm doing literally is giving this a, a whirl. Fucking thing, get off there. I hate, you know, I know it's tiny little bits, but I hate waste. I really hate any form of waste. Fuck it, hard luck. Right, so we'll come back to that in a few minutes. What I'm going to do next in here is start chucking all this water, all this terrible waste of plastic. Water. I was going to say, today's 5th of July 2019. Right into Tesco's, you can get 5 litres for £1.10 or 20 litres in 2 litre bottles, 20 litres for £1.70. That's a no brainer, isn't it? But look at all the fucking waste of the plastic. Tesco's, get your fucking act together. I'm going to have to find some way of reusing these or recycling them or something or other. It really boils my fucking piss that we have so much plastic waste for stuff like this. Anyway, uh, right, back soon when I've started chucking all this in. I have put 14 litres in there, it's probably about three litres, so we're up to about 17. I've got another three here waiting to go in. But you know what, I think I might have fucked this brew. Um, because as I was pouring all this water in, um, oh, hang on. this cork, which had been on the side, rolled off and fell into there. And that, for me, after sterilising everything, do you know what, I nearly just dropped my fucking phone in there as well. Um, after sterilising everything, I mean, that's the icing on the cake, isn't it? So we'll see, it might get an infection, it might not. I'll, I poured the water from a great height to get plenty of aeration into the top. Uh, we will see how this turns out. We will give it about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, just to start sort of like bubbling up. And then I'll put the last three of those in. Uh, to bring it up to exactly 23 litres and make sure I get plenty more air in there. So what I'm going to do now is cover that over and put that somewhere warm. I won't turn it on. And get another beer. Very, very agreeable. This isn't the, um, the hopped porter. This is, a, this is another stout that I made by pimping a couple of kits. Uh, and this is for Simon. This is a brew I did for our Cy, the Duracell kid. Uh, this should leave him laid waste. Actually, I don't want to waste him too much because next time he comes up, he's coming up on his new trike. Um, however, we will now wait until that yeast is ready to pitch. And then I'll add the last of the water up to 23 litres and we'll bung it in the fermentation fridge. So short hiatus while I go and drink my beer, have my tea and wait for that yeast to do its frothy stuff. It's funky. A mere, I don't know what, 20 minutes or so later and another one of those. And this is what's happened with the yeast. Uh, so next what we do, oops, is we bung it in here. But what I'm gonna do first is chuck some more water in there to bring it up to 23 litres and then plonk that on top. That has now taken it up to 23 litres, just over actually. Doesn't matter, I don't really want a strong beer. This is gonna be a session lager for the hot summer days that are yet to come. And then we have a great big foamy yeast. And that then, Goes spush just like that. So pop the lid on and then chuck it in a fermentation fridge. And now the waiting game. It should usually take I don't know, about 10 days. Uh, it's on 19 degrees on the ink bird. 
So now we just wait and see. I should know within eight or nine days uh, whether or not dropping that cork in there has fucked it all up. Because the rule number one is everything likes beer as much as we do, including bacteria. And the other rule is out of the 10 most common errors, 11 of them are down to sanitation and sterilization. So we'll see. Fortunately, it's not an expensive kit and it's a dead easy kit. Uh, but now we just wait and see what happens. This is now 14 hours in and bubbling away beautifully. Uh, if you can see, this is where the beer ends here. And all this is Krausen. It's gone right up all over the lid. Almost starting to push its way out of the uh, airlock pipe. So I think that is a pretty good start to a fermentation. Very, very nice. Day 14 and a bit and that didn't half ferment well and it's been stable now for three days so there's a titch over 23 in there I'm gonna keg it so that would take about 18 off 19. That will leave about four in there. I might be able to pull one or two bottles off. But I'm not overly bothered. So I'm going to siphon it really, really carefully. And uh, and then that will whack in the keyser and give that a few weeks. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was looking at it in here and it looks ever so nicely clear. So I thought, you know what, rather than rack it into there and then wait another day, I didn't want to run the risk of any more oxygenation. So I've uh, siphoned it straight into there. I don't know how much I've got. I reckon probably 19, the full 19 odd litres in there. I don't know. Yeah, quite pleased with that. This I'm going to rack into a little bottle. Well, not a little bottle, a five litre bottle. Filter it, let it settle, and then bottle it. Whoa! This is the, I don't know, probably about three and a half litres of really cloudy stuff from that Hellas Lager. And um, I stuck it in here. This is just my normal beer fridge. And it stayed cloudy for a couple of days. And this morning I looked at it, and boom! That is what cold crashing is about, I guess. Well, that's all right. I got um, I got another three liters out of that. And just to show how well settled it was. Ooh, I don't know if we can show that. There you go. Look at that. I shaked it up again. Shaked it up again. That's the right old muddy slurry of a trub. But I think these will be all right. So I've lived in Yorkshire too long. That's the thing. And I'm thinking like you know I've got six more fucking bottles out of that. <laughs> So, I'm going to whack some carbonation drops in, chuck some caps on, crown cappy thingies, and then put it somewhere to uh, to carbonate for, I don't know, probably about three or four weeks, and then put it somewhere cold for three or four months. But that's all right, isn't it? That's like free booze from Trub. Yeah, I hope they don't burst. Anyway, good. Happy with that. It's been in the keg 15 days in the um, kegeratia and or the keyser or whatever you want to keyser I suppose you should use the proper term and it is uh, just started to settle and clear lovely nice um, in that one of those lovely glasses that we nicked from place in town but it's just starting to clear nicely 
Now I've had a few cheeky glasses of this, I have to admit, because this was the first one that I actually kegged. And, uh, and the other reason was, I didn't know whether I'd fuck this one up when I dropped that manky old cork in there. Uh, I think I might have been well, well lucky there. I think the gods smiled on me that day. But do you know what? This is a, it's a fairly cheap kit, the Mangrove Jacks Helles Lager. But I'll tell you now. Oh. That is pucker. I am. Um, give you a quick tour around the boatyard. <laughs> Which, of course, nobody really wants a quick tour around the boatyard because what people want to know is what's the beer like? It's lovely. So, Mangrove Jacks, LS Lager. Pleased with that. Highly recommend it. Um, hope this video has been of help. What was I supposed to say? If you liked it, click like. If you didn't, please don't don't click not like, because it does my ego in. Um, oh yeah, and if it's been helpful, and if you like this sort of stuff, uh, this rubbishy sort of me sort of banging on about stuff consider subscribing to the channel there you are so on this lovely what is it 2nd of august so that's only that's just a month uh, I'm, I'm gonna hold off drinking too much of that i'm gonna leave that now for about another six six weeks because i've got a few others to start getting stuck into um i will do a, a follow-up tasting but i think that's only going to get better pucker lovely so thanks ever so much for watching sorry it's been really long because i'm not really much of a video maker or a vlogger or anything like that but um if uh, if that's been helpful uh i'm happy cheers boys and girls